Welcome to RoboFlow. Let's take a look around. If you've been here before, you may have noticed that your data sets are now called projects. As we've added more features to our software, we've realized that we're more than just a data set management tool. We want to help you build computer vision models from beginning to end. So this is why we introduced the idea of a project. A project is a space for you to bring all the different elements together that you need in order to build a computer vision model. So if you're trying to solve a new problem, you're most likely going to create a new project. Here you'll see I have four projects. Each one of these represent an object detection model detecting a different animal. Now I could combine these all into one project and I'll show you how to do that later on this video. But for now, it's easier for me to manage my data by breaking these up into different projects. So let's begin by creating a new project. For this project, we're going to create an object detection model detecting raccoons. So for my project type, I have object detection selected. And then for my annotation group, I'm actually going to enter raccoons as well. Think of the annotation group as the category of the things that you're going to be detecting in your model. So for instance, if I had brought all these different projects together and I was detecting animals, my annotation group might be called animals. If you are detecting different types of cars, you might call that cars. These high level categories are what you typically want to name your annotation group. So let's go ahead and create our project. And now we're ready to upload our data. In order for a model to learn what objects you want to detect, you need to provide images that contain a lot of examples of those objects. So in this case, we're going to upload a bunch of images containing raccoons. To upload from your computer, you can select files or the folder you want to upload, or you can just drag and drop those files directly onto this screen. As your files are processing, go ahead and review your images and see if there are any you want to remove. You can click the trash can icon to remove those images. Those will not be uploaded when you click to finish the upload. If you are uploading images that are already annotated, be sure to also drop your annotation files onto the screen. RoboFlow will cycle through all of your images and make sure to match up the annotations with the proper image. So as you can see here, these five images have already been annotated because I had uploaded those annotation files. If you don't have your own data to upload, be sure to check out our public data sets page. This is a collection of various data sets that people have made public so that others can start experimenting with computer vision. If you find a public data set that you'd like to experiment with, go ahead and fork the data set, sign into your account, and that data set will automatically be imported into your account. Once you've selected all the images you want to upload, be sure to hit the finish uploading button to fully upload your images and annotations. Whenever you upload images to RoboFlow, we ask you what evaluation sets you would like these images to go into. Click continue. And now your images are uploaded. If your images are already annotated, you can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is generating a new version of your data set. If you have images that are not annotated, you can go ahead and do that here on this screen. Simply click on any image to start annotating. By default, the bounding box tool will automatically be selected. Go ahead and start annotating the different objects. Because I had uploaded annotations previously, my raccoon class has already been listed. If I want to create a new class, for instance, maybe I want to identify this raccoon as a large raccoon, I can go ahead and create that new class and then continue drawing those boxes. Each time it will let you select the class that you want for that box. Once you've finished annotating an image, simply select the left or right arrow up at the top of the screen or on your keyboard to move to the next image. Now, 
Now we're going to finish annotating the rest of our images. Once you finish annotating all your images, hit the back button to return to your project. Now all your images are annotated. You can review your evaluation sets by clicking on each of the tabs at the top of the screen. If everything looks good, the next step is generating a new version of your data set. Now that we've annotated all the images in our data set, we are now ready to prepare our data set for training. The first two steps we've already completed, and so now we are applying pre-processing options to all the images in your data set. By default, auto-orient and resize are applied. If you'd like to edit these configurations, simply click on the row and adjust, then click apply. If you'd like to add an additional pre-processing step, for instance, grayscale, simply select the option and click apply, and that is added to this version. Once you're done with pre-processing steps, go ahead and apply augmentations. Our augmentation options take the images in your training set and augment those images to create new training data for your model. So for my raccoons, I might want to flip these images so that the model can better recognize a raccoon no matter how it's positioned on a tree. Because raccoons tend to be nocturnal creatures, I might want to augment my images to adjust the brightness. So I might want to darken these images to emulate what a photo might look like at different times of night. Once we've applied our augmentation options, we move on to the final step, which is generate. By applying augmentations, we create more examples for the model to learn from. And so we can just simply decide how large of a data set we want to train. The bigger it is, the longer it takes, but potentially more accurate it will be. For this, we're gonna just do three times, so we end up with 93 images, and then we click Generate. While your data set is generating, you can go ahead and rename it. At the top of the screen, you'll notice two options for training. You can train outside of RoboFlow by exporting your data set to whatever format you'd like. We have several options here. Otherwise, we make it easy with RoboFlow Train. Simply click Start Training. And within 24 hours, you'll have a working model that you can experiment with and even deploy. To improve model performance, you'll want to continue to generate new versions of your data set and experiment with different configurations, such as different pre-processing and augmentation options, and potentially even the size of your data set. The more versions you generate, the more you can compare results and narrow in on what makes your model more accurate. Once your model has finished training, review the results provided by RoboFlow. You can look at your metrics, various training graphs, and you can even see how accurate your model performed on your validation and testing sets. RoboFlow provides several ways for you to deploy your model, including curl command, direct URL, an example web app, and you can even test inference on your webcam. If you're working with your team on multiple projects, you may want to create a team for easier access to everyone's work. Simply go to your profile and create a team. Then you can invite others. If your team is working on multiple projects and you would like to merge them into one, 
simply hover over a project, select Merge, select all the projects you would like to merge, and then provide a new name for your project. When you merge projects, you simply create a new project containing all the data from the selected projects. So your existing projects are still available. If you need to delete a project, simply hover over the project, click delete, and then type in the project name.